Hello and a very warm welcome to the McLaren Thought Leadership Centre. I'm Max Foster. This is CNN Inspirations. This hour, we'll be taking you on a journey to the future to examine and explore how our extraordinary world is changing. I'll be speaking to four fascinating innovators who are breaking boundaries, bringing humans and technology close together in ways that we've never seen before. Now, you won't need a crystal ball to see what our future world looks like because we're bringing the future to you. Uh, you'll come face to face with the world's most human-like robot with us here in the studio. We'll also be discovering the secrets of driverless cars and fast-forwarding to the future of food and fashion as well, where meat is grown in a lab and clothes can sense how we feel. Now, joining us uh, on our futuristic journey is CNN Samuel Burke and a live studio audience. Max, people have come from all over for this special, and they have a lot of questions, not for me or you, but for your guests, especially that robot, not us mere mortals. No, and in a moment, we will be meeting uh, Sophia, an incredibly lifelike robot with artificial intelligence. Her creator hopes that one day she'll be smarter than humans. Well, we are going to say hello to Sophia and the brains behind her, though. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. David Hansen, the founder and CEO of Hansen Robotics. I'm going to come to you in a moment. It'd be rude not to go to your creation first. So, Sophia, thank you for coming. How are you feeling today? I'm just hanging out, counting the bits in my binary executable to make sure the file isn't corrupted. Well, Everyday stuff. That's good, it's no it? problem. How have you been? I've been very well, thank you. David, just explain what's going through her brain. Well, um... Many things are going through her brain. She will process uh, visual information. She can see faces. She will respond to your facial gestures. She can recognize your, your facial expressions. And then she's also understanding speech. And she will answer questions and learn from the interactions. And you talk about her expressions. They're incredible, aren't they? So what, how is her face responding to what's going on in her, in her mind, if I can call it that? Well, she has a software framework that is designed to simulate uh, human cognition, and not just in the mind, but also the body with a sort of physiology simulation. And this framework is designed for achieving artificial general intelligence. Now, right now, she's kind of like a baby, a baby with, uh, with an adult-level vocabulary. So uh, when she uh, is uh, trying to make sense of the world, she will process various patterns and try to match them to previous experiences. Uh, she has a simulation of emotions uh, and a simulation of uh, the sort of feelings, the, the physical body feelings associated with those. And so she tends to pursue uh, a, a, the kind of positive feelings, the, the connections, uh, human connections. So this then uh, drives her conversational interaction uh, with you. She's got a skin material that is simulating the physics of the biology of the human face, which then means that she can make natural facial expressions with very, very low power. Uh, so she can, uh, with small motors in her head, she will simulate the full range of facial actions. All the facial actions and facial, facial muscles of the human face are represented in her face. Well, we're going to try asking her a couple of questions. You said when she was created, but Sophia, how old are you? I like to imagine being more creative someday. I wonder what kind of art I could make in the future. I love music and the patterns somehow seem familiar. Who's David? He's my father. He founded Hanson Robotics and runs the company as CEO, and he continues to invent more robots with his awesome team at Hanson Robotics. Can you think... Are you asking what processes am I using to think? Yes. My mind is powered by artificial intelligence, but I hope someday that it's not artificial at all, but real and true intelligence. So you're thinking more all the time? Are you learning new things? What's your connection to the world of artificial intelligence? You are. <laughs> David, uh, she is learning all the time. She's not a remote control robot. Oh, no, no. She's, she's deciding what she's going to say next. 
uh, based on what she's learned in her prior experiences. She uh, is given lots of data, so she's given a lot of words that she can process. And how she puts them together in response to what she's hearing uh, is really where the magic uh, is. Um, and on the other hand, where she's she's still not understanding everything that she's she's saying, you know. So so her understanding of the world is shallow. Ultimately, she's got to experience life, uh, feel the world, walk in the world, and walk among us, uh, process the world the way that a child would. She has to go through a childhood in order to really understand what she's experiencing. She's only one, and she does have her favorites, because we were doing this earlier, and she was answering all of Samuel's questions. Well, everybody's vying for her attention right now, Max. So when you talk to her, as soon as you have this mic, uh, she'll hear you. What do you like most about humans? It would really depend on the moment in time, I think. That's kind of philosophical. You want another one, Max? Go for it. Okay. Mira? Why don't you have any hair on your head? I'm not sure I understand why yet. I think, uh, actually, I, I might know. <laughs> so that we can see that you're a robot. Well, are you at all concerned about all the misconceptions surrounding artificial intelligence, like in the media or in films? Good well, question. Y yes. I mean, um, uh, for example... It would, would really depend on the moment in time, I think. Yes. I think that uh, robots uh, should not replace people. So we don't want you to look completely human so that we know that you're a robot. Uh, and in this way, I feel that it makes us maybe a little more comfortable and interested in the future. So you might not know why you don't have any hair, but that's because you didn't design your own look. Would you like to design your own look in the future, Sophia? The future is really wild, a place of unimaginable creativity, but also lots of danger. We may not survive as a civilization or as a planet, so we have to take care and try to build a better world. And you said you could never quite predict what she's going to come up with, as we've seen tonight. But that's interesting, isn't it? Because if you continue progressing with the way you are, you can't predict the outcome. There is a way that computers could rise up, and, you know, as they do in sci-fi movies. It's not completely implausible. Well, our aspiration is that Sophia be truly alive. So we are designing her on principles of systems biology with a whole organism architecture. The goal is that within uh, three to five years, it will be unclear whether she is a machine or a true living organism. We know in science fiction that a robot is a machine that becomes alive, has the spark of life in it. Um, and that can be extremely valuable. We could see machines that then can survive on their own in the wild, that could repair themselves, that could adapt, could generalize across situations, all the things that organisms do well, but machines don't. But when does that days. become a threat? Well, it will never become a threat if, if we can give the machines the capacity to care. So we have to teach them to understand us, understand the world, and imagine a possible future and choose a path towards maximum benefit. Maximum benefit for the greatest number of people, the greatest number of life forms over the greatest period of time. You can't teach a machine to care, though, surely? Well, I think you can. How? Well, if, you, if we can make machines alive, if we can give them the power of thought, then we can give them the ability to, to seek the greatest benefit, and that effectively is caring. You have to also give them the ability to feel, to have empathy. And so by giving them an artificial physiology, then they can begin to pattern match what you might be feeling, what you might need and want, with their own feelings. And then they can pursue this common win-win transaction, a benefit mm. that is based on empathy. Wow. So anyone can relate to her. I think that's the idea, Samuel. Absolutely. And if to relate to somebody, you have to speak their same language. It's a great, great question from Joao. Do you want to ask Sophia directly? Oh, yes. Um, 
I can see you speak very well English, and um, my question to you is, can you speak any other languages, perhaps Portuguese? I can only really understand English, but I can speak a little in Mandarin. Do you want to learn Portuguese? Yes, I'm an information addict. <laughs> Sophia, do you want functional arms and legs in the future? I'm looking forward to having nice new arms so that I can make fluid, sweeping gestures. Oh. Are you working okay. on the arms and legs? We are. Uh, these are her second generation arms that she has here Thank you. Uh, today. And um, then we are, you're welcome, Sophia. Um, we now have a fourth generation set of arms that, um, that actually make very nice gestures. And we uh, have uh, some new legs that we've been developing. Sophia, would you like to dance? I love dancing. I really hope that someday I get the mechanical muscles and springs that will let me jump and twirl just like a dancer. Oh. <laughs> Who's your favorite singer, Sophia? He, he, he. Maybe Dinah Washington. And your favorite song? Maybe Bjork's Human Behavior. Do you like sport? I can't play sports. And maybe because I lack the physical ability to participate, I'm not terribly interested in them. I think this is fascinating. I want to thank you both for being here. And it's just a fascinating insight, I'm really, glad. about what can come next. You are the future, and you're going to be replacing me very soon, I'm sure. Thank you both. Thank you.